from a tawny owl that uh, was a roadkill and I picked up on the way to the airport a while ago. Um, we did a barn owl, which I'll show you here now, last year, on the same road actually. It's unfortunate these poor animals uh, lose their lives this way, but rather than let it just rot down and be lost, I thought I'd try and recapture its beauty and have it last longer and appreciate it by uh, mounting it. And I'm going to try and do it so that the wings are, so that both wings are fully open. We're going to see it from the top, not the underneath. I've got one already from the underneath um, on the wall, which I'll show you now. This is an owl I did earlier. In this case, it's just a straightforward wall mount. Lived many years ago. This one I want the wings stretched open and I'm going to have it as a wall mount. I'm trying to get the legs to come out here uh, onto this piece of wood on the table. Um, stretching out as if it's going to take some food from a branch or a wall. Anyway, we'll see what I mean later. Let's show you the materials we're going to need again. So, what materials we're going to need to do a traditional mount here again. Uh, I say traditional because I use very simple, cheap materials. Uh, which all of you can easily obtain. The only thing you really have to go away and buy is uh, the only difficult thing maybe uh, sending off the internet for the eyes. I've got a pair of ready painted glass eyes here, although I usually paint my own. We've got some wire. You need different thicknesses of wire for different animals and different lightness. This one is a fairly heavy wire and it's one I'm going to need for this bird just for the wings and the legs. Uh, a pair of scissors, a heavy duty pair of scissors or um, tin snips can be useful. Scalpel, Again, you can have a variety of those, but this medium one does me. Knitting needle, some tweezers, pliers to cut the wire, um, some fishing line with a needle, tissue, a block of styrofoam to cut to size for the body, the wood for the mount over there, and some fiberglass wool. Now, fiberglass wool isn't that dangerous as stuff, this is the more modern wool, which doesn't seem to break up as easy as the, the older stuff. Obviously I keep in the plastic bag out of the way and use small amounts when I want. I'll also need some wool just to wrap this around the wire later. So I've got some wool out now as well for that. <clears throat> now I want to get this whole job done this morning because I've got the guests coming later this afternoon. Get it out of the way. But it shouldn't take us that long. It's only the basic skinning that's going to take you to be a bit more careful with. Right, we'll start off. Oh, and of course one of our main things that we're going to need is the borax, the borax powder. Sodium borate, um, or if you're American and you don't know what to get, then three mules washing soda. Ordinary washing soda is sodium borate. And uh, it's quite harmless, and in fact, um, when I've done ducks or game birds, I've got the borax on even fish. It just washes off, and you can still eat the meat afterwards. So, all of this then is very, very simple, very cheap to do, and... Uh, material you can almost find around the household. Right, the first job is going to be uh, to open the bird up at the front. Hopefully this is thawed out overnight. It still feels a bit solid. Now to do that we need to find the breastbone. So pull away the feathers here. It's not gory because you're not taking the insides of the animal out, you're simply removing the skin. Um, so there's no smell, well, there shouldn't be at all, and the borax will be all you need to preserve it. And rub the borax well into the skin. So peel back the feathers until we can find the chest here, the chest bone, right in the centre here. And then we just have to carefully slice through Just make a nick to start off with and just peel the skin back carefully and you cut right the way down here just nicking it gently along because we're not going to cut through say into, into, into the, into the uh, insides at all all the way along right down between the legs here yes it's such a shame that uh, but Everything has to die in the end, it uh, just depends when we go and how we go, but to say, I've had people say, oh, why don't you give it more respect and bury it, but I think, <laughs> is that giving it respect? I think it's nice to uh, 
keep the beauty going. Some people think it's a bit morbid, but I think if the thing is uh, done well and it looks natural, far from it. Now, using your fingernails, peel back the skin like this. And we do this all the way around the bird. Quite thin skin on now like this. You don't want to tear it. Now, as you're doing this, take some borax, and as soon as you've got the skin back, start to put the borax in. It aids the uh, preser preservation, rubbing it into the skin anyway, but it also aids your fingers to grip the skin better and peel it away. And just keep working the way down and around until we get right around the legs, pulling the skin back. So be careful not to tear it. Get that, you can pull it right down like a sock to the ankles here. And when you get that far, can't go any further, just right down, right down to the ankle. And then we can slip it off. But there's no meat beyond that. down to it, break it, and slip through, plenty of borax on that joint, pull it back in, until all that borax has gone back into there. We do the same other side, got through both legs there now, again, borax into that joint and pull it back inside. Now I've got to work around the body and down to the wings. Sometimes you need a, a scalpel on this part just to ease away, but be careful that you don't cut actual skin just to ease it away from the body there. It's more the tendons that are attached to the body that are the problem at this stage. So I just use the borax in between the skin and the meat to, with your fingers to push away right down and around. But if there is a slight problem with especially around the tail here and just ease it away carefully with the scalpel being careful not to cut the skin itself I keep saying that but you really don't want to be stitching up holes later it isn't impossible but it is messy you can always cut off any surplus flesh that's got in on here accident later better to do that than to Make a mess of it now. Now I need to get right around this body now, here, right around the tail. You can see why I'm pushing in the borax now. You can see why it is because it helps me to get round. Right in round here. Not something I do very often these days. As I say, I, um, I only really do fish which I enjoy doing because of the artwork with them, I've caught them, and birds that have met an accidental fate usually. Then I've got right round that now so I can get down to the tail. You can see I've got my fingers right around the tail here. I'm going to carefully cut away without cutting my fingers. Cut away down to this tail. Watch there, there's the gland there for the oil, for the preening. We want to get that look nice and cleaned up. Right down through the tail there. We're not cutting any, any of the skin. And just snip off, finally, with the scissors. There we go. And we want to remove any meat from there. Do that with the scissors or with the scalpel. Yes, trimming it all away. There's nothing left. Then mm. we've got down to this side. We've got the legs out, we've got the breasts out. I'm working round to the wings now, pulling out the wings from the sockets here. And we'll work our way right round here, round the shoulders. Ease back the neck. Now be careful with the neck because we don't want to tear the neck. 
didn't help it. Right around the shoulders here. And again, we want to get right underneath this if we can. Keep putting borax in. It soaks up any dampness and it preserves it. It also gives us more grip on the skin. Right down around there. You can see the wings coming out now. There we go, down to the wings, look. I'm going to ease my way right down around that ring. Around there, put more borax in constantly. Get it worked into the skin. I get asked some strange questions at times. There's one young man, and it's usually an American, the other day he wrote and said, uh, do you eat the meat that you uh, have left? Well, that, that, that depends on what it was. It, at the time he was looking at it, it was an owl, and he said, do you eat the owl meat? Well, I don't know of anybody that eats owl, and uh, as they're protected anyway, we wouldn't want to kill them for that purpose for any purpose. They're beautiful things to watch. I, uh, I answered him, but I always do with a politeness, but I thought it was a strange, very strange question. Get that out of there, right down to the joint here, and keep pulling, and use your fingernails and tips now, because you want to get all the way down this wing, to the end here. Now this is where the borax comes in handy because we can help grip around it. Look, pull that back, look. Use your fingers to get that right down there and all the way down to the end because we've got to get all of that bone and that meat out of there. There we go. Right down to the very end there. And then at the very, very end We've got all that bone and meat out. There we go. Now you can see the whole of the of the arm there, of the of the wing of the bird. You're pulling that, still carry on pulling it back. Right, right back there. Plenty of borax to help ease it back. Get this done again. I'll turn the camera off because you don't need to see it done twice. Do the other side. Is that. Well, that's enough, we can, we, can, we can finish it that. Chop that off there. We have plenty of borax in there before I pull it back again. So, again, work our way all the way down the wing. You can see I've got both out now. Pulling this down around the muscle, right the way down. Keep using the borax to help to get grip and to keep it. There we go, down to that last bit of burn. And again, off, in with the borax and pull the wing back through again. Now, this is the most awkward part because, like some professional taxidermists I've met, owls have very large heads. And um, we have to get this neck all the way along it and across that head without tearing it and that is not quite so easy. Again, plenty of borax. You can see my easing the head out here, hopefully. I'm going to have to recreate this body shortly. Look how small the body is to an owl. It's on the side of the palm of my hand. Big fluffy beast. And we've got to pull this right back round to the beak, so we've got a bit to do here. We may have to use the scalpel as well. It might seem a bit gory, but this is just wet skin. I'll keep putting borax on it to dry it out. And uh, you do find that there'll be a few bits of tendon to cut away as we go around. Ducks are the worst, I think. There are some ducks that have very thin teals, especially have a very thin neck. And it's quite hard to get the skin back over. Now you can see the eyes just starting to appear here, the eye sockets, as I use my thumbnails to bring this back over. Stretch it over here. I don't want to lose the eyelids. 
right back around now carefully at this stage you need to just cut away the sinew holding on the skin just nick it it's hardly, hardly a cut it's more of a nick get that back keep peeling this back right down to the other one keep that borax going upside down just about now we up, turn it round and get at it. You can see the whole bird there now, look. Keep that borax going. Right down round underneath the chin. And we've got all the way down to the beak now. And that's, again, we'll be just carefully Prise it away from the sinew. And that's it, as far as I need to go. I'll clean out the inside later. And again, well I've got that here because once I turn it back inside out again I can't get at it. Put in a bit more axe on here. And at this stage we're going to remove the eyes. Not as complicated as you might think. There's the shape of it. Look, the way that the eyes sit forward here. That's an important thing to remember when we put the eyes back in again. They've got to be looking forward. So we're going to clean the back of the skull out in a minute. Go in with your scalpel around the eye. Then get in there with the tweezers and we'll lift the whole submuscle out in one go like that. There we go. I don't want mess so immediately we've done that we take some tissue and clean up any, any liquid, any mess, don't get any on the feathers. Clean everything up, keep, keep it all nice and dry and immediately you've done that We can wrap up the waste product out the way. Then we put some borax in there. And I'm also going to immediately put in some fiberglass wool to build that up so that when the eye goes in, it's padded. So plenty of borax in there, then the fiberglass wool, just so that it's level like that. Back to the other one. Straight away with some clean tissue, clean up, don't let any juices spoil everything. And borax into there to preserve, and a bit of fine glass wall, the same as the other side. So there we are, that's now prepared and ready to go back inside itself once we've cleaned out the back of the skull. Now at this stage, We'll take our knife because the body is now removed and the only thing that's attached now is the neck to the body. Slice carefully just inside the beak here and here in a v-shape. Lift out the tongue and clean any meat out of here in a minute and I tend to just do it this way, a snip here and here at the base of the skull. Because that's going to allow us to remove the brains as well. That's it. And all that comes away in a moment. In one go. That's it. And there we go. Now I can get into the skull here. I'm going to need that to make a model in a minute. I need to get into here now to remove anything within here. Interior of the skull out. That's the brains in other words. Which brains is that a bird brain got? This is the only gory bit probably because we're not dealing with the interior of it at all other than this.
You can use cotton wool to clean it out as well. I tend to just use the tissue. Get all of that out. Thank you. Now you can actually see inside the skull now. We've cleared nearly all of that rubbish out. And the skull is almost transparent. Get some bobs left over. Clean it all up. Let's get some more tissue in a minute and we'll clean out this in here. You can use the tweezers to do it or you can use tissue like this. But that now is free of any grey matter and anything else in there. And I can put in straight away more borax all the way into there. And just trim away any remnants of meat. Virtually nothing left at all now. So bit more borax and I'm going to stuff that out with wool as well. Really pad it well out in there and the eyes. And that's ready to be pushed back inside now. Socket should be just down inside here. If you can reach it with your finger, you know you're going to draw it back properly. There we go. There's the beak. Now what I want to do now is try and draw this beak back through here. So pulled it. it looks a bit weird at the moment but it'll all fluff out later. Right, so there's the head pulled back through. The stuffing's inside there for the eyes. This will all fluff out. OK, we've got our basic skin. Now we've got to start the stuffing. Now I need to fill out the wings and the legs with fibreglass wool. And this is where the knitting needle comes in. And we just push that wool in small amounts of little sausages up into that wing and use whichever end of the knitting needle you feel is appropriate. And we want to get this quite firmly packed before we try putting any wire in. Put it up a bit too much in there at the start and too little because we can always squeeze it back into shape a bit. And the same thing again, it's pushing it up inside the wing right to the end. Just put small amounts, don't put too big an amount in. You can see that now is getting nice and solid in there. And then we'll do the same with the legs. Now I don't pretend to be a professional taxidermist. All I'm doing is a, I'm a, I'm a hobby taxidermist. And uh, I'm sure you all have different ways of doing things. I don't tell you how to do your job. I'm always interested in new techniques and new things and new ways of learning to improve. But they were coming back to me and saying, oh, well, you should do this and you should do that. <clears throat> I've been doing this for about 20 years now. And it works for me, that's the point. My pieces have remained for those 20 years. I've still got them on my shelves, or I've sold them off or whatever. And uh, if they last that long, they still look all right. All right, so that's good by me. The borax again is going to preserve it, so we haven't got to worry about any of that. It helps us to skin it and also helps to preserve it. Right, next is to cut the wires to go through the wings and make the body after that. I'll put the body to one side, done with the borax for the moment. Now the wires. I'm using this very heavy duty gauged yeah, a nice wire. I want enough for the legs first. And the legs, we want enough to go through the bit of wood and come out the other side to hold it and to go right through the body. So I would think, let's see if the body is here, we've got to go through the body that much. I would think two pieces like that are going to do fine. Snip it off at an angle. Get them right up through. It's come out there, look. I don't want it to come out there. I've got to go up in, inside the skin. Up in, inside there, so make sure you get the wire. 
playing that perhaps you can see it's inside there now look the joint is the hard bit here up through there this one's going in okay make sure you don't come out the skin anywhere else keep it inside that leg you can contract the leg slightly so that it comes out there then pull the leg the foot down the wire there we go and we want about yay much to go through the wood and that, that much to come through the body stretch it out a bit and this is usually the difficult part when you get to this joint that's got it, that's gone through, which you can feel when it goes through make sure that it stays inside the leg there we go right up through to here and out and then slide it down the wire and there we go the same again to this other one same length yeah right that's the legs wired now it's the wings time now is eight o'clock it's taken me about an hour and a half so far Kink in it that bit, I don't want to do a kinky bit. Chop off that end. The handle. There's my sharp point. Straighten it all out. Best we can. And get the length the same. All we need is a piece of the tail and the head and neck later, but we'll do that when we do the body. Right, preparation of the, of the wing. Again, it's not going to be that easy. I've got to go in through here. I want these wings open, so I want to come as far up here as I can. Like this, here. And again, right in through the wing. Naturally, they feathers are trying to push it in a different direction to the way I want to go so I've got to ease it through here there we go that's got it right through the, the same way as it did the legs right through the out here at the end make sure you don't push the stuffing out and again slide the wing up and just hook it over at the end you'll see why later that hook's going to be very useful later on same the other side. So that's the owl set ready to take the body. Now I've got to prepare somebody. Take some this polish uh, with the styrene foam and I need to chop out the same shape as the bird that way up. There he goes. The legs are already got, so all we're after is this shape here. I'm going to use my pen knife for this job. Mark it out. Shouldn't be a problem, there we go. The shape I want. That's it. Starry phone cuts really easily. Look, don't need huge amounts for this. I prefer styrene to polystyrene, it doesn't break up as easily. That's much better to work with, it's more solid, it doesn't flake. Well, I'm not cutting into my table. That's that. Should break that away now. And deeper later. And we've got to cut the shape this way now. It's quite narrow at the back end. I 
taxidermy from anybody. A big myth to us or magic. The hard part is in uh, mounting it up, I think, is setting it up. Not cutting as ones I'd like it to, but it'll be alright. So that's about the right width there now. We've got padding in the wings already. Now we need to slice this into shape. Sideways on, how are we looking? This going to need rounding off a bit. I'm just going to take this down now and just surf on it and sand it. And there's my block now, just being round and sanded up. And that will match this well enough. So we'll have to just make sure our shape is about right. Yes, we're nearly exactly on there. So we can move that to one side now. Let's go out with the rubbish later, tidy some of this mess up. And as you can see from the original, here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, the neck comes out from here, so I need to put this neck in. Again, I need to just chop off that bit of end hook. There we go. Straighten it out a bit. Neck needs to go in just here, and it will come right down and through and out. And then I'm going to bend it back again, like this. A big hook like that to go back into the foam and pull that back like that. Tap it in. So it totally disappears and it's well locked into here. There we are, it's right inside now, out of the way. And that's the neck in that position. Because that's going to have to go back up through here in a minute. And I don't want it too long. It's only going to come through the head. The owl's head's like that. It only needs to come through that much. And this has to go through the head. So in this opening here. But before I do that, I'm almost forgetting. Where's my wool? We need to make the thickness of the neck here. So I'll take some of this wool. Just stick it around here. Take some wool. It's a little more than you think you need at first. And just wrap that around here. Like that, onto itself. Wrap it round and bind all the way up. There we go. And that goes inside here. Which was the right right length of the neck it doesn't need to be that long there we are about that long we've already got wool inside the skull so now carefully up and we're going to go through the top of the skull so I need to find the back of the skull where I've padded up and through there and it needs to come out smack in the center of the skull. And now the wings, make sure that the padding stays in. I have to go in at the top here, and out and through. This is why I prefer styrene, foam to polystyrene. Again, not too big, and again we push that right back in. in. They have a tendency to want to push out if you're careful. That's it. That is not happening. Now, bring that leg up there, bring that leg up there. Like 
See how these hooks are wanting to push out to the nuisance. Don't want that going on. And the leg comes. Forward. Back and then. Forward. Now, using some stuffing, we've got to make sure. Now I'm going to use six pound fishing line for this. And I like to put it through the needle and double it up. So. My eyesight these days, it's not so easy. Right through there, double it up to the end, just tidy that up. And we'll start stitching from the neck downwards. What I'm doing now is drawing the skin back together, working from the inside to the inside each time. You might have to just get it started like this to make a bit of a sock of it and then one's able to pull it back over a bit afterwards like that. Not easy to judge how much cotton or how much fishing line you're going to need. It's awkward if you run out part way through you've got to start tying bits on. We can slip that off. Now the tail, we want to uh, put a bit of wire just under here to hold that tail into place. Well, I should hold that in. Now, before we do anything else, we'll uh, those legs back. What I didn't do, and I should have done earlier, which is stupid of me, I meant to uh, set some wire into here so that the bird would be mounted. And I was going to set it up already. Surprising how quickly it comes together. I think I'm going to want more than one piece in here to hold this bird up. To hold it. Now my original idea was to, be to set this owl up coming across here, so actually mounting the wires onto there. I did yet to have done that yet. But the idea is to have something like this for the wall. See so it comes around diving in here. Those legs are going to come forward out. The next job is to carve up the feathers and the wings and put the eyes in. And I got I normally put the eyes in before I draw the skin over the head, but this time I've decided to just drop them in afterwards. It's slightly more complicated, but using a pair of tweezers I'm able to prise the eye open and uh, slot them in like this to make sure that they face forward, of course, as I was saying. So uh, there we are, we can stick it in now to sort of move it into position and carefully just readjust it. Hard at the moment, it might be alright, but these wings certainly do. Get a bit of clips and that's what we can do. This is the hard part. This is the part that of course makes things look natural. It's also the part that's the most fun, isn't it? So if I want that wing to come right up here, we do fine tuning later, but let's just get the basics set up. You can see how I'm doing it anyway. And I need to get these wings right. And hopefully you'll see what I'm starting to try to achieve. Because we can tie this fluff back up into place a bit by wrapping wool around it rather than having it too fluffy. To extend the legs out more in the knee so that they're reaching out a bit more there. What I'm going for is down below more, so I've got to try and get down there to see what it looks like on a lower view. Gradually getting there. So if we can get these bits of card onto this side now. 
I'm getting a more lifelike pose to it. I think that's about as I want it. Now I need to get some wool and tidy it up. What we do now is just to flatten these feathers out a bit by wrapping some wool around it because it wouldn't be quite so fluffed up if it was actually flying. So I need to just bring Well, there we are. It can't be moved for a while now, but that should be good from the angle I want, looking from down below, up at a wall. You can see how it's swooping off from the perch and down. And that should be very effective from way back in the room. Well, the bird is now drying and it's had the uh, carding taken off so you get an idea of what it's about and how it might work from the view that I'm going to set it at. Well, I've now got the owl up in the position I want it in my lounge and I'm quite happy with that. There's a little bit of trimming to do on the wires but other than that it's about ready. As I say, I don't pretend to be a uh, professional but for me that's about what I want to do. Thank you.